It is 7.17 a.m. What am I doing in an amusement park already? This is way too early. Magic Kingdom opens at 8 a.m. today, 7.30 early entry. With the kind of attendance that Disney World normally gets, which is just an astronomically insane number. Is there anybody in the world that doesn't have these shots of the castle? Even at the ridiculous prices they charge to get in here, it seems like everybody's been here. And you show off these pictures or these videos, and nobody's impressed. Because they're like, oh yeah, we've been there millions of times. But yet it doesn't stop us from taking the pictures and the videos. And the 8 a.m., 7.30 a.m. early entry does not stop the ridiculous Seven Dwarfs Mine Train crowd. They could open at 4.30. There'd be people out here at 3.30 lining up. Now, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train was a great ride, or if even it was a good ride, I could understand that kind of insane demand for it. But the thing is, it is just okay at best. I didn't realize that Barnstormer and Tron has this pathway that connects them. I will be in the next boarding group to be called. They're on 67 to 72, I think is what it said, and I'm in 73. This will be my third ride on this trip. All of them being able to do it with the virtual queue. Now the first two I did from my hotel room with the Wi-Fi and that got me in a very early group. I was being called like either before official opening or right after. This time I was on the bus and everyone on the bus was also booking their thing so my phone got bogged down so it pushed me into a later group. There are advantages to that later group instead of using that early time on this you get to use that early time on things like Jungle Cruise, Haunted Mansion, the things that'll build up lines later. I'm about to park hop over to Epcot. Don't know when the next time is that I'll be in Magic Kingdom. This is my last day at Disney World. So I'm gonna do Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios and over there. I really enjoyed Magic Kingdom on my three days that I started here. I ended one day here. I didn't do much on that night though. But all three parks, all four parks are great, but I think Magic Kingdom's got to be my favorite, even though Hollywood Studios has my favorite rides. I like the setup. I just like the presentation of everything. That was cool, I rode both Tron and Cosmic Rewind in about an hour and a half. Now the Tron I had the virtual queue for, Cosmic Rewind I bought a ride. I haven't spent a lot of money on this trip, haven't bought as many Genie Pluses as I thought I would. I've only done it two days out of the six. Haven't really needed it the other days, just the way that I've utilized it when I've had it. And the way that I've utilized park hopping, taking advantage of the short lines when I found them. And I had a day where I, I only spent a half day at the parks, well, sort of. And other than that, all other five days, I'm doing open to close, early entry open to close. Cosmic Rewind, it's growing on me. Don't know if I would put it ahead of Tron yet. I still am confused by the music, but then again, I haven't seen the movies. So if I had seen the movies, I guess I would understand it. So I'm gonna head over to Hollywood Studios. I've been stacking my lightning lanes over there. In fact, in two minutes, I can book another one. And the thing about that, if you don't know, with Genie, you can 
adjust your your uh, return times you might get assigned a time that's way too early you're not going to be in the park at that time well just keep going back and modifying it to a later and later time it does not reset your two hour clock window so i got my lightning lane stacked up got tower of terror picking mini slinky dog dash and here in about 15 minutes gonna book rock and roller coaster and then if i'm able to i would still have time to do one more try for toy story mania i could do smuggler's run with that one at the end but nah so here's what i got booked right now rock and roller coaster i added right after scanning into tower of terrors line so i've had three lightning lanes booked for a while now plus that which i'm probably not going to go back for because i purchased a lightning lane for it i could go back if i wanted to but i don't think i don't think i will i'd rather just stay here and go to rise of the resistance at the end or see the phantasmic show so this is what they call stacking slinky dog dash is actually one that i booked way back at i believe 10 o'clock and I booked it for six o'clock at that time, and then I went back a little bit later to get the later time. Then after that, I had booked Tower of Terror and kept pushing it back to a later time, and then I added on Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway two hours later after my original booking time of Tower of Terror. And then two hours after that is when I was scanning into Tower of Terror. Right after scanning into Tower of Terror, I hit that two hour mark. Otherwise, I could have had four booked at once. My next booking that I'm able to do will be, let's see, my next booking is at 7.03. You're only able to do a lightning lane for a ride one time per day. So I just did Tower Terror. I can't do Tower Terror again today. Rise of the Resistance is not on Genie Plus. You have to book and you have to pay for a lightning lane for it if you want to do that. So with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Tower Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, and Slinky Dog Dash, I almost had all four booked at once. The only other one that tends to get a line that I can do is Toy Story Mania. So at 7.03, I'll look to book that. The Arendelle Royal Historian! Hello, everybody! <laughs> oh my gosh, Anna, you are gorgeous. Thank you. <laughs> it is me, I'm Aria. Uh, you saved our entire kingdom. It was you who saved your sister and yourself. An act of true love will thaw a frozen heart. You're my sister, Elsa. I love you. Aw, oh, Queen Elsa. These are the citizens of the kingdom of Hollywood and they have done an amazing job in helping us sing our air in the land of... It was almost like they had the words in front of me. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, Aria, the Royal Historians of Arendelle. Thank you for joining us. I just did the Frozen show, and now, right in the middle of my time frame for my Runaway Railway Lightning Lane. Hoping to get in and out within a half hour to go see the other Frozen show. Lightning lane that I booked early in the day paid off. At eight o'clock, it reopened after about, oh, a little less than an hour of being down for rain. And the wait time, 110 minutes in the standby. My goodness. So I got my third ride on this trip on Slinky Dog Dash. All of them were night rides. Here we go. That initial launch is really, really weak but it does pick up some decent speed towards the end of the launch. 
and you get a great view of Star Wars from the top of that hill. And then you have all these bunny hills that don't do anything, but it's still fun. I was pretending like I was getting airtime. It may not be a high throw ride, but it is still fun though. It doesn't warrant the kind of wait times that this gets. My advice is to buy Genie Plus and book this early. And you might want to adjust your time on the Genie Plus booking to get a night ride. Because it is cool in the dark. But if you adjust it, you got to do that early. I think I had done that adjustment around 11 o'clock. I'm actually surprised that it lasted that long. It wasn't long after that that they were all booked up for the day. That Genie Plus was a great investment for today. I only used it two times at Magic Kingdom on Peter Pan and Space Mountain, but I used it five times from 4.30 on here at Hollywood Studios. Just adjusting the time and having them stacked, I was able to get seven uses out of it, and the five uses here were all big ticket items. Oh, and I did book Smuggler's Run. I could go do that. I'm thinking about it, but I don't know. I don't care much for that ride. So I'll probably just let that one go. And my virtual queue for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind ended up getting canceled. It originally was going to be in the last hour, but they ended up not having enough room to accommodate it. I wasn't going to go back there anyway. Just too much trouble. But it was an option I was keeping open for myself. Plus now I get to decide, do I want to do Rise of the Resistance or do I want to do Phantasmic, which may not even happen because it's starting to rain again. And the last thing I did on my Disney World trip was a ride on Rise of the Resistance. It only took about 35 minutes in total from entering the line to getting off the ride. Not bad. I'm not sure how much of the Fantasmic show they're doing, but a lot of people are there. It was raining pretty good whenever I got in line. I do like great shows, but those fireworks finale kind of shows, uh, I like them. They're all right, but I'd rather ride Rise of the Resistance. I rode the top six rides at the park. I saw the best show in all of Disney World twice, the Frozen show here. I came into this trip kind of as an anti-Disney person. Not really, but somewhat. I was doubtful that this trip would live up to any hype. I was doubtful that I would have all that great of a time here. I, would, I knew I would enjoy some rides, but I didn't think I would have nearly as much fun as I did. For all of you that are doubtful about Disney, I say give it a shot. Especially if you do it the right way. Stay on site. If you're on a budget, do the all-star value resorts. That's what I did. Go at a time of year when they're expecting low crowds by their standards. Just be prepared that low crowds by their standards is still quite busy. And don't be afraid to purchase some Genie Pluses on some days. Especially if you're feeling good that day. If you wake up and you know that you're going to have a lot of energy and you're going to be ready to keep moving all day long. And especially if you're going to be doing Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. Oh yeah, get Park Hopper too. The Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios are great parks to have Genie Plus on that day that you're doing both of those. Especially doing it the way that I did it on my first day and my last day, starting at Magic Kingdom, ending here. Because there's a lot of rides that get long lines here. And then Rise of the Resistance. The line is very reasonable at the end of the day, so you don't really need to purchase a Lightning Lane there. But that is an option. I had a couple days where I was really feeling weary, especially last night. I had to end my day early yesterday because I was just I was just exhausted. I was done. For that day at least. Got good sleep and was ready to go for a full day today. And oh yeah, I did drive. I brought a lot of my own food and drink. I brought protein drinks for the morning. Brought my own cereal. Whenever I got down here, I bought some lunch meat and cheese and bread, put them in the fridge at the hotel with everything that I brought with me, including some uh, crackers that I bring in my pockets, some uh, protein bars that I brought in my pockets, five hour energies that I brought in my pockets, 
into the parks every day. I never really felt like I needed to buy any food. And I've gone six days having not bought food. So no waste of time with food. For some people, they come to Disney for food. Not me, I don't care. Food is a necessary nuisance. And what I feel is a waste of time that could be spent doing rides and shows. But that's just me. Everyone's different. You do your trip the way you want to do it. You might want to go with a more expensive place. You might want to book those uh, character dining things that I wouldn't care at all about, but you're going to love. Go for it. <laughs>